When someone has achieved consistent excellence, is it worthwhile to listen to what they have to say? You bet it is. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And recently, one of the greatest basketball coaches of all time with a track record unmatched, the winningest coach of all times, announced that he was retiring, a gentleman named Mike Shoshevsky, who because of the length and difficulty in pronouncing his last name, is always commonly referred to as Coach K. As a matter of fact, he's the coach of Duke University. The court they play on is called Coach K Court. And he is someone that has a proven track record over, I don't know, 40 years. And he just announced his retirement. It was a big deal in college basketball. But even bigger than that, I saw him, he was on a show, actually the Today Show, and he was being interviewed by Savannah Guthrie, a very, very good interview, asked, interview, asked excellent questions, and she asked him a question, and it sort of went on to leadership, and I said to myself, wow, in a nutshell, in two or three minutes, this man has described what it takes to be a great leader and achieve great results. So, I went back, and I transcribed what his answer was, so let's go over it because it's very, very worthwhile. Here's the question. 41 years, head coach of Duke. You're not the same man, the same coach that you were when you started all those years ago. You have adapted. You have changed. You are flexible. How do you feel that you're different than when you began? Okay, then Mr. Coach Krzyzewski looks into the camera and says, and I'm going to go over step by step and, and comment on each thing because it's, they're, they're beautiful gems of brilliance. I know a lot more. I have better balance. I, I have 10 grandchildren now. The one constant is that I'm always trying to learn. And I think I listen better. Let's go over just those little statements. All right? I know a lot more. If you want to be an expert, a, cre a creative expert in your field, you got to know the field because you can't be creative unless you're an expert in that particular endeavor. That's what allows you to do more because you are an expert, you see everything, and that gives your brain a chance when you say, all right, what else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? When you send that message up to the universal mind, you come back, you get a little nuance here, a little nuance there, and when you put it together, they call that creativity. The one constant is that I'm always trying to learn. Wow. You know, people that are the great achievers never sit with a pat hand. What they do is they're trying to improve. Why? Because things are always changing around you. Technology is changing. Principles remain the same, but technology will change and that will give you different results. You know, and, and just as an example, in Coach K's tenure, when he first started out, you went to college, you went there for four years, you had the same guys for four years. Now, if you get a really, really great player, that guy's only there for one year. They call it one and done. And then you got to start all over again. Well, some coaches, when they were first doing this, didn't embrace the concept. Coach K embraced the concept immediately. The game has changed significantly since when he started some 40 years ago as a coach. You know, back then they didn't even have a three-point shot. So, I mean, the, he's taken all of these different elements and adapted his coaching style, and he's done that because he knew all of the nuances, he knew all of the little tricks, and then he said, how can I take advantage of this situation? Always trying to learn. Are you always trying to learn? Are you sitting there with a pat hand? And I think I listen better. Wow, great leader telling us one of the secrets to his success is that he's able to listen better. You draw more in. You're able to 
see more things, when, get different people's viewpoints, see things from different paradigms, different perspectives, different angles. That's what's the key. That's what's the key to not only individual success, but also success as a leader. Next thing he said, continuing with his answer, I don't micromanage. I want people to follow their own instincts and have the courage to do that. Whoa. Okay. I don't micromanage. One of the things, I want people to have the courage to follow their own instincts. Okay. When you are a leader and you've chosen people and put them in different positions, one of the reasons that you do that is because you say, this person has some talent in that area. And what you do is, is you, you know, you formulate the big game plan like a coach will do. You formulate the big game plan and you break it down. And if you want to get something done, you give somebody the assignment and you say, okay, this is what we want done. Have them repeat it back to you so you make sure you're on the same page that, you know, you want, you know, inspect to expect, expect to inspect. What do I expect? This is what I expect. Now you have the skills to get that job done. Use your skills, use your creativity to get that job done, to get your, use your intuitive inner smarts to help you to get that job done. And the key thing is that when you give somebody an assignment to do, to perform, and they're capable of doing it, don't micromanage it. Why? Because someone will work much, much harder to make their own game plan work than they will give, than, than they, will, they will work when you give them every little detail when you micromanage. I'm inspired more to work my plan to show you that my plan works to make it work than I am to say, all right, here's the game plan, you know, go ahead and, and you, you understand that factor about people as a leader. When you have capable people, give them the opportunity to use that intuition that's inside them because they're really motivated to get their job done because you've given them the responsibility of getting this job done. You have a good level of communication, a good level of mutual respect. They want to perform for you if you're doing the job right. And they will do whatever it takes to get that job done. Give them the opportunity. Now, if you see that they're making a huge mistake, if something's obvious, they're making a huge mistake, sit down, go over, so on and so forth. However, if they're making little tiny mistakes, let them make the mistakes. That's how people grow. They will, they will adapt, they will overcome, they will make adjustments, and they will learn from it. That's how people learn. One of the things that's important as a leader is to give your charges the people that you your mentees to give them a chance to make some minor mistakes so that later on they'll grow from it and it'll be something when they are in the position of being a leader will be in a position to understand and make the right choices make the right judgments and do the right things last part of his answer know that you should be responsible for the environment that you're in you shouldn't necessarily just give orders. When you provide a very productive environment, talent, relationships, and togetherness will take over. I've seen that happen with my do teams, my USA teams, and they make me look pretty smart sometimes. Wow, this is such a subtle piece of great advice. Know that you should be responsible for the environment that you're in. That's what the leader needs to do, is to create a culture of productivity. How do you do that? You have a common vision, a common goal, a common dream. And you sell that to the people that you're in charge of. And they buy into it. They see it, they feel it, they smell it, they taste it, they touch it just as you do. When Martin Luther King, the people that follow Martin Luther King, did they feel that way? Of course they did. Great leaders have that capability of 
sharing the vision, share the vision, and selling the dream. All right, share the vision, sell the dream. All right, and they, they have people that embrace that. And when we talk about the culture, we talk about a culture where you give people the opportunity to get excited about an idea so that they're thinking about it and you amplify one of the things that make a person successful, which is you have a vision and you say to yourself, how can I make it better? How can I make it better? And you make it an obsession. You make it a burning desire. And when you do that, you're sending that vibe up into the universe and the universal partner, the infinite mind, will help you with mind flashes and events you couldn't predict or plan that will work in your favor. Also, you because you have that personal obsession, that burning desire, you start to see things around you and connect them to your main idea. And when you can do that with the entire group of people, think of how you're adding more assets to achieve your goal. And that's one of the things, that is the key thing that makes a successful group stronger as a group than if you took each individual part and added them together. You've seen some teams where they have a bunch of great players and just for some reason they don't mesh, they can't get the job done. On the other hand, you've seen some teams where you say to yourself, wow, they're not really quite as talented as the other team, but they, they chemically, they fit together. They all have the same dream, the same goal, the same ambition. They work hard, they do the little things that make another person outstanding. They focus on the team concept. And when you put all of those pieces together, they're stronger than what they would be as individual. Togetherness takes over. Talent, relationships, and togetherness will take over. Are you following what I'm saying? That's what makes someone an outstanding leader, is getting the best out of the people, not only the great people, the superstars, but also the little people that are part of the group as well, when everybody contributes, when everybody's motivated, when everybody's excited about reaching that vision, that's when you're able to make the sum of the parts greater than the individual pieces. And isn't that what a great leader does? Wow. This interview with Mike Krzyzewski, this question with Mike Krzyzewski, there were other questions, but this one particular question took about three or four or five minutes. And I said to myself, in a nutshell, isn't this what leadership is all about? Truly it is. And once again, remember, hey, don't ration the passion. Fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.